Do you know Illustrator? If so, you may know that it provides three so-called drawing modes, normal, behind, and inside. How do they work? Well, imagine you're in a submarine and along comes a giant squid. Draw normal puts the squid in front of the submarine, which is fine. Draw behind puts the squid in back of the submarine, which is a little worrisome. Draw inside puts the squid inside the submarine, which is terrifying for both you and the squid. Oh, and do you want more? Do you want to keep me afloat? Well, then check out my Patreon or just enter deeknow.com. Takes you right there. Now, that squid example, that is real artwork that I created inside Illustrator. But what I'm about to show you is even better because we're going to take this and turn it into this. That is a custom spiky blend inside a complicated path outline. How in the world did I pull that off? Well, keep watching and I'll show you. Let's start with a look at the three drawing modes available to you inside Illustrator. You can find them down here at the bottom of the toolbox. They're draw normal, draw behind, and draw inside, which is currently dim. Don't worry about that. We'll take care of that in a moment. And along the way, we'll take this, I think, familiar map outline right here and turn it into this amazing work of art. All right, so let's start with a look at draw normal. Now, if you've never played around, with those three drawing modes, you 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 are always working in draw normal. That is, that is the normal mode. And so what it does is it draws shapes at the top of the active layer. And so as you can see here inside the layers panel, the active layer is US of A, for what it's worth. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the rectangle tool just because it's an easy tool to use. And I'm gonna change my fill and stroke attributes up here in the control panel, the horizontal control panel. You can work if you want inside the big glumping properties panel, which as you can see, takes up four times as much space as the horizontal control panel really doesn't provide any extra added value and it cuts off New England, which I do not approve of that at all. So I'm going to return to the window menu and choose properties once again to get the heck rid of it. Make sure, by the way, that you have a check mark in front of the word control and then you will see the horizontal control panel, which is so tiny by comparison. Very easy to use as well. I'm going to change this first watch to green, I guess. That's the fill swatch, by the way. And then I'll take the line weight value up to 10 points. Just so we can see that we've got these big, huge rectangles. So I'll draw a rectangle and then just draw another rectangle. And every time I do, I am drawing the new shape at the front of the stack here inside the active layer, which in my case is US of A. All right, so notice it doesn't matter which rectangle is selected. So I could even, I'll press the control key, command key on the Mac to temporarily get access to my black arrow tool. I'll click on the United States of America to select it like so. And then I'll draw a new shape. And I, I went ahead and got the, the, the fill and stroke attributes. But you can see that it didn't care. Illustrator doesn't care that the United States was selected. It goes ahead and puts the new rectangle at the top of the active layer. And that would happen if I select the shining sea layer as well and just draw a shape here. It's going to now be in back of the United States, but that's because it's appearing at the top of the shining sea layer. All right, I couldn't begin to want all this garbage inside this document, so I'll just undo it all by pressing Control z command z on the mac a bunch of times and now let's alternatively check out the next drawing mode draw behind which works a little differently so first of all notice the us of a layer is still selected and that's because i undid all that stuff and now if i draw a big rectangle it's going to appear at the bottom of this layer like so and then it keeps appearing at the bottom now however if i were to select the united states of america right there by control or command clicking on it and draw a new shape we have new fill and stroke stroke attributes white and black by the way but this shape is now appearing in front of those rectangles and that's because it's appearing in back of the selected shape. So you see the difference there. It is, it is a little more contextually sensitive. It knows what object is selected. It also knows what layer is selected. So if I select that shining sea layer and draw uh, an object like so, then it went ahead and appeared uh, behind the last selected shape. So it, it, it knows which shape is active. If there were no shape that were active, if I went up to the select menu and chose deselect, for example, and then 
I drew a big, huge rectangle like so. Oops, wrong layer. I'm going to undo that change and switch to Shining Sea. Watch this. Draw a big, huge rectangle, and it appears nowhere. It's invisible, and that's because it's behind the big rectangle, the big gradient rectangle on the Shining Sea layer. I just want you to see that. I also want you to see something else. Notice, if I were to switch, there's a lot of noticing in this movie here, with video. I'll go ahead and switch to Draw Normal and the shiny sea layer is selected. Let's say I create a new layer. Just by clicking on a little plus icon down here at the bottom of the layers panel, this new layer appears in front of the previously selected layer. Compare that to what happens if I select Shining Sea again and I change the mode to draw behind, then it's going to appear in back of the selected layer. So there's just something to, to keep in mind. And these modes are persistent by the way they stick until you switch to a different mode. And so that can be a little confusing. It's just something to watch out for. But let me show you a real world example. Why don't I? I'll just go ahead and undo all that junk that I didn't really want to do in the first place. And what I'm going to show you, let's say I want to draw a frame around the old United States. Well, I'm going to turn on this guides layer down here at the bottom of the stack. I'm not going to click on it to make it active. I'm just turning it on. And let's say I want to draw a big frame around the states here and so i still have my rectangle tool selected i'll change the color let's say the fill color to this guy right here um some shade of brown and i'll change the stroke color to a shade of brown as well and now what you might do is just go ahead and draw a big rectangle like so oops i made a mistake i wanted to show you this just for the sake of demonstration how things would work if you draw normal so you draw normal and that means that the new shape's going to be in front of the stack, in front of that layer. And then you would right click and you would choose arrange and you would choose send to back. Sound familiar? You want to send this guy now to the back of the stack. But it can be much more convenient just to draw it in the background in the first place. And so to do that, I would just undo again, as I am so often, and I'll switch to draw behind, and I'll go ahead and draw a big shape like so that's snapping, presumably, to those guys, and it automatically appears in back. So my view of the other objects is never interrupted. All right, I'm going to zoom out just a little farther here, and I'll draw another shape that aligns to the, the red bleed boundary right there. And then I'm going to switch to the black arrow tool, which you can get by pressing the V key. And I'll shift click on that interior shape. Notice that the shapes are one behind the other. I'll go ahead and turn off the guides so that you can see that the newest shape is behind the previous shape because of the draw behind mode. And if you can't tell that, it's probably, if you can't see that, it's probably because your bounding box is turned on, in which case, if it, this reads hide bounding, this command that is under the view menu, if it reads hide bounding box, then go ahead and choose it. If it reads show bounding box, everything's good. All right, anyway, now what I'm going to do is right click anywhere inside the document window and choose this guy right here, make compound, make compound path. And that's going to use one shape to cut a hole in the other so that we have a frame. And then notice that my stroke is set to 10 points. I want it to be six points, darn it. And I'll click on the word stroke right there in order to bring up this panel. And I'll align the stroke, not to the inside, which seems like the right thing to do because we want it on the inside of the frame. But actually, the frame is is got a hole in it. So we want to align to the outside in order to create this effect here. And now I'll just zoom in and you can see that we have this wondrous frame. All right, now let's say I want to demonstrate how to draw inside. Well, notice, if I, it, we're still noticing things. Notice that. If you go down to the bottom of the toolbox, draw inside is dimmed. And that's because something has to be selected to draw inside of it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and click on the US of A, the 48 contiguous states right here in order to, to select them. And then I'll switch to draw inside like so. And now notice, I'll switch to, we're still noticing. Notice that. I'm going to switch to the rectangle tool. And what's interesting, I don't want to say notice this one. This is just an interesting thing. I'm going to change the fill and stroke, stroke attributes. So I'll change the fill to red. And I'll change the stroke to nothing, like so, none. And what's interesting about this 
is that I did not affect the selected shape. And that's because we're just drawing inside of it. Illustrator is no longer really paying attention to it. It's looking forward to what I'm about to draw next. And so what I'm going to do is just draw a big rectangle like so across all those states. But because the contiguous states are selected, Hawaii and Alaska do not receive this big red stripe. And that's no good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to undo that change. I'm going to switch to draw behind for just a minute. I'm going to press the V key to switch to the black arrow tool and click on the frame. And this is just a little bit of housekeeping. US of A is still selected that layer in the layers panel. I'm going to create a new layer, not by clicking on a little plus sign, but by alt or option clicking on it. That'll force the display of the layer options dialog box. I'll call this layer frame and I'll change its color to, let's say, violet. This is just aesthetic stuff. But notice, the new layer is below the US of A layer. That's because I'm working in the draw behind mode. I'll click OK. And now this little green thing right here, this little green square, that represents the selection, the frame. And so I'll just drag it down so it becomes purple. And now the frame is on that purple layer. And you can tell that's the case if I turn the layer off, frame disappears, turn it back on, it appears once again. I'm going to lock the frame just to protect it and switch back to my US of A layer. And now... I want to select everything on this layer because I want to turn all the states into one big compound path. And so all you have to do is click in the top right corner. Notice that thing, that little wedge right there indicates selected art. Click to select art. And so you click and you select all the art on that layer. And now I'll right click once again anywhere inside the document window and choose make compound path. And now we have one big, huge path where Illustrator is concerned. Now, I'm going to go back down to the bottom of the toolbox to the drawing modes, and I'm going to switch to draw inside, and I'm going to grab my rectangle tool. So I'm going to have to repeat a few steps here. I'll change the fill to red, that shade of red. You can use whatever shade of red you like. You don't even have to go with red. What am I talking about? Select any color. I'll switch the stroke to none, escape out of that panel, and now I want to create a rectangle starting up here. Notice when you're working in a draw inside mode that you have this little kind of dotted corner thing going on. All right, so this indicates the bounds of this entire compound shape. So I path that is. So I'm just going to drag from here down to kind of the top of the nose of Maine, like so. And that will put that stripe inside. The United States of America. All right, now what I want to do is switch back to my black arrow tool. Again, you can get it by pressing the V key. Don't drag inside the red shape because you move the entire big country. Oops, I dragged twice just to make things more confusing. All right, I'll undo those changes. What you want to do, notice this garbage up here. It says clip group because we are now working with a clipping mask. And notice this second icon, edit contents. Go ahead and click on it. And that will once again select the stripe. Don't drag inside of it. Drag its boundary like so. And as I drag, I'm going to press the shift key to constrain the angle of the drag to exactly vertical. And I'm going to press the alt key or the option key on the Mac to create a copy of this object. Notice I'm seeing a little double arrowhead cursor. See it right there toward the middle of the screen now? That tells me that I'm going to create a duplicate of this guy. So keep the shift and alt keys down. That's going to be shift and option on the Mac. And then release right about here to create, actually right about here is going to work out better, to create a copy of that stripe. And now we want to create the traditional seven red stripes. So you want to go to the object menu, choose transform and choose transform again, which has a keyboard shortcut of control D or command D on the Mac, which stands for duplicate. So goes ahead and creates a third stripe. And then I'll press control D or command D on the Mac for a fourth one, then a fifth one, then a sixth one and count along with me a seventh one down here aligned to the bottom of Alaska. And we end up with this alluring effect right here so patriotic my wife took a look at this and she was like please don't create something that jingoistic so here's what i decided to do i switched back to the draw normal mode and i want you to see that you can switch modes you can cycle through them by pressing shift d so that's something you may want to be aware of and then i went ahead and deselected my art by pressing Control shift a command shift a on the mac and i turned on this ironic Ironic, that is caption layer right here. 
All right, now it's time to say goodbye to Draw Normal and Draw Behind as we focus exclusively on Draw Inside. Specifically, I'm going to demonstrate a very common scenario, one that you'll want to take advantage of a lot, I think, in which we cut a bunch of path outlines and then paste them inside another one in order to create what's known as a clipping mask. Specifically, we're going to take the continental United States. Actually, we're going to take Alaska and Hawaii as well, which are part of the West, don't you know? And we're going to turn them into this kind of topographic map in which what is essentially a custom gradient is expressed as a very spiky blend. All right, so I'll go ahead and switch back to this guy here. I'm going to turn off the region labels up there in the regions layer at the top of the layers panel, and I'm going to turn off the states layer as well. Just for now, we'll come back to it. And, now, and then I'll turn on this relief layer, which represents the outline of the contiguous United States, the, the 48, as well as Alaska and Hawaii. And so I'll just go ahead and click on Alaska or Hawaii, doesn't matter which one. It's all expressed as a single compound path. And then I'll zoom in by pressing Control Plus or Command Plus on the Mac. All right, now notice that I've got this other layer called High and Ack Lines. That's Hawaii and Alaska Lines. And I'll go ahead and turn it on so that we can see that we have a bunch of path outlines. And so I'll just go ahead and click on one of them to select it. And notice that it's just a custom polygon, an open path outline, don't you know, that I created very simply by clicking with the pen tool. So you just click a bunch of times. Each one of these lines, by the way, has seven anchor points. It's usually the way you want it. That is to say, not seven anchor points. I don't mean that at all. I mean that each one of your path outlines should have the same number of anchor points, and they should continue in a consistent direction. So I started drawing mine over here on the left and then continued over to the right. All right. Also notice that the lines have no fills. They do have strokes of various color, and we also have four-point path outlines. That is four-point strokes. That's up to you, though. You can vary the stroke thickness as much as you want. All right, now I want to select all these guys, and because they're all located on a single layer, all I have to do is click in the top right corner of that layer to select them all, and now I'm going to blend them by going to the Object menu, choosing blend and then choosing make. This is a very old school command, by the way, it has a keyboard shortcut of control alt B or command option B if you are so inclined. But anyway, all I have to do is choose the command and Illustrator goes ahead and blends between those path outlines like so and creates a custom gradient in our case. All right, now I wanna spike things up and you do that by going up to the effect menu choosing distort and transform and then choosing this guy right here roughen which is going to rough up those path outlines these are the default settings by the way you can play with them if you like i want corner points however in fact i want everything i'm seeing right here so i'll just go ahead and click ok to roughen up those path outlines and now notice that we have some holes do you see those right there? Little blue holes and little white holes here and there. And that's because we need more steps inside of our blend. And to make that happen, you return to the object menu, drop down to the blend submenu once again, and then choose blend options. At which point, you're going to see that spacing is set to smooth color, at least by default. What we need is specified steps. We've got 69 steps, it's telling me. We also have a lot more gaps now, which is not a good thing. And so I'm just going to press shift up arrow a bunch of times in order to raise that steps value until we don't have any gaps whatsoever. And notice, if you will, even at 140 steps, we still have some gaps. That's no good. So I'll keep pressing shift up arrow until I get to... 170 still gives me a gap. I don't know, your results may vary. And that's because the rough and filter, by the way, is random. So we've got some random spikes going on. Anyway, just keep pressing shift up arrow until every single one of the gaps goes away. In my case, it's 190. That's a lot of steps between each one of these polygons, by the way. And then click OK in order to accept that effect. All right, now we need to cut this blend, this terrific spiky blend that we have right here, and paste it into Alaska and Hawaii. And so I'll go up to the Edit menu and choose the Cut command, or you can just press Control x Command x on the Mac, you know that. And that'll cut all that junk. And now you need to select either Alaska or 
Hawaii, actually, that yeah, that's right. I, I, I mentioned them correctly right there. They're all a single path outline, even though they look like a bunch of subpaths. Illustrator thinks of it as being one big, huge path outline. And now what you want to do is go to the edit menu. Well, you can't at this point choose any of these commands, because if you do choose even paste in place, you're going to return the gradient to the place it was, the blend that is. So I'll undo that change. And what I need to do, of course, is switch to the draw inside mode down here at the bottom of the toolbox. And so it's if it's dimmed, it means you don't have anything selected. But in my case, I do. So I'll choose draw inside, at which point I will see those dotted corners right there that are indicating that I'm about to put something inside of these states. And now all I have to do is go up to the edit menu and notice you can choose play, paste, that is, but it'll just paste it in kind of the center of the screen. You could choose paste in front, but that will do just that. It'll put it in front, not inside the object. To put it inside, you need paste in place. So go ahead and choose that command. And just like that, you go ahead and paste that custom gradient, that spiky blend, that is to say, inside our custom, uh, our compound path, that is to say, which <laughs> represents Hawaii, the many islands of Hawaii, as well as the great state of Alaska. Now we're going to take a look at a little thing I'm calling the persistence of draw inside, because by gum, this mode is tenacious. Once you've created a clipping mask, as we have, you can continue to play around inside of it. Let me show you what I mean. Notice that neither Hawaii nor Alaska are selected, and yet we're still seeing those dotted corners that are telling us that the, that the draw inside mode is active. And I can confirm that by going down here to the bottom of the toolbox. Notice that icon, if you have a keen eye, you can tell the difference between these modes based on their icons. In any event, draw inside is still active, which means I could switch to the rectangle tool, for example, and I could change, let's say, the fill to a shade of brown, and then I could change the stroke to nothing. And now notice if I start drawing around Alaska, it looks like I'm drawing in front of the shape, does it not? which would prove me to be an absolute liar. But I'm not lying because as soon as I release, that rectangle appears inside of Alaska. Now, that doesn't happen to be what I want, so I'm just gonna go ahead and press Control Z or Command Z on a Mac to undo that change. Here's something else I want you to notice. I'm gonna switch back to the black arrow tool, which I can get by pressing the V key, and I will click on either Alaska or Hawaii to select that entire compound path. Now though, it is identified up here on the far left side of the horizontal control panel as a clip group. So what gives? Well, the compound paths that represent Hawaii and Alaska, they are the clipping mask and then the blend is the clipping contents and together they form the clipping group, just so as you know. All right, I'm going to deselect this object by pressing Control Shift A, Command Shift A on the Mac. I'll press Control Zero or Command Zero on the Mac to center my zoom and I'll click on the contiguous 48 states. But notice, even though I have selected a totally different path outline, Draw Inside is still set to Hawaii and Alaska, which means I could continue to draw more stuff inside of those shapes. If that's not what you want, and it's definitely not what I want, then one way to work is to switch back to the Draw Normal mode down here at the bottom of the toolbox. And then with the United States, that is the 48 states, not, not dissing you guys, Alaska and Hawaii, the 48 contiguous states, with them selected, I'll go ahead and switch back to draw inside, and now I see the dotted corners around that big compound path. All right, now notice, well, a couple of things. First of all, this HI and AK line slayer no longer has anything on it. So I'll select it here inside the layers panel and click on the trash can icon right there to get rid of it. And then I'll turn on this layer called six point lines, which contains a bunch of path outlines with six anchor points that I created using the pen tool once again. Now you can draw lines directly inside of a clipping mask if you want to. And so I'll just go ahead and select the pen it's already selected, I guess. And then I'll switch the stroke to none this time around, and I'll change the color of the stroke to, did I say, I changed the fill to none. I did, I said that right, didn't I? Whatever, anyway, you know what I mean. I'm changing the stroke to a color, and then I'm gonna change the line weight 
to four points and now I'll just click all over the place any place I want and I'm only drawing inside of the 48 contiguous states of the United States of America like so. So notice I'm drawing inside of that clipping path. And so now if I was to press the V key to switch back to my black arrow tool and click on America right there on the United States, it's going to tell me it is now a clipping group. It just contains that one path outline and nothing more, but I need to get rid of it. Obviously, it's making a mess of things. And so I'll switch to this icon, edit contents, in order to select that line that I just drew right here. I can move it around like so, change its fill and stroke if I wanted to. I'm just going to press the backspace key, delete key on the Mac to get rid of it. So I could have drawn every single one of these lines inside of this larger path outline. That would have been weird and confusing, however. So the easier way to work is to just go ahead and click in the corner, that upper, the top right corner that is, of the six point lines layer to select all those lines and then cut them by pressing Control X or Command X on the Mac. Notice that we're still drawing inside of the 48 states. And so all I have to do now, I don't have to change modes because it's already done. I'll just go up to the, the edit menu here and choose paste in place. And that will put all of those lines inside of the larger path outline. All right, now I still need to blend these lines. So I'll go up to the edit menu. Oh, no, nope, object menu is what I mean. And I'll drop down to blend and I'll go ahead and choose this guy make, or you have that keyboard shortcut, control, alt, B, command, option, B on the Mac. It is a really convenient one if you make a lot of blends over the course of your lifetime. And in our case, it didn't really do much. We don't have a, the fountain that we had with Hawaii and Alaska. We just have a new path outline, a new step that is between each pair of path outlines. And so what we need to do is add more steps by going to the object menu, returning to blend and then choosing blend options. And now I'll change spacing to specified steps, make sure blend the preview checkbox is turned on and then press shift up arrow a bunch of times until all those gaps disappear, which for me happens at a value of 40. Okay, great. That's a lot less than what we did for tiny little, relatively tiny, that is uh, Hawaii and actually immense Alaska, which is not drawn to scale here, but that's fine. I'll just go ahead and click OK to accept that change. I still need to spike up my relief map here, my, my topography. And so I'll go to the effect menu. I will choose distort and transform and I'll choose roughen once again. And again, I'm very happy with the default value. So all I'm going to do is click OK in order to accept this change. Problem is that now I have a bunch of gaps, especially over here in the Rockies. Actually, this is the area well, west of the Rockies, isn't it? But whatever it is, we don't need those gaps. We've got gaps over here in different states as well. And so I'm going to tediously return to the object menu, tediously drop down to blend, and then tediously choose blend options. But actually, there's a better way. That's not so tedious. I'm going to escape out of there. Notice this tool right here, the blend tool. It looks like its icon looks like a square blending into a circle. Just go ahead and click on it to select it and then press the enter key and that will bring up the blending options, the blend options dialog box, at which point make sure preview is turned on, it will be. And then click in the value and press shift up arrow a bunch of times until those gaps go completely away, which for me almost happens at 100. You, you know, your results again are gonna vary because Ruffin is random, but let's go with 120, why don't we? Why don't I anyway? At which point I'll click OK in order to accept that change. All right, now things are gonna get wicked cool. This doesn't have anything to do with draw inside, not specifically, but, but it's awesome. I'm gonna switch back to the black arrow tool. Get ready for this. And I know lower, I don't wanna be in a draw inside mode anymore. So another way to work is just to turn off the active layer. And now you're back to draw normal. Notice down here at the bottom of the toolbox, draw normal is back in business. That's what we want. I want to be able to see those state outlines. And so I can make that happen by blending the relief layer with the states layer. So first I'm going to select the six point lines layer, which is now empty because I cut all those lines and I'll click on a little trash can icon to get rid of them down there in the bottom right corner of the layers panel. And then I'll turn on the relief layer, which covers up all the borders of the states. Don't want that. So I'm going to target this layer. 
like the entire layer. And you do that by clicking in this little circle over here on the right side of the layers panel. And then I'll go up to the top left corner of the screen. So traversing the entire distance here to the word opacity up here in the control panel, click on it. And then I'm gonna change the blend mode from normal. You can play, you can try out whatever you want, but I'm telling you the best one for this particular effect is hard light. That is going to give us a really super high contrast effect that's going to allow us not only to see that gnarly topography, but we'll see all of the state borders as well. And now I'll just go ahead and click off that path outline to deselect it. And that is at least one way to paste a really spiky custom blend inside of a clipping mask using the draw inside mode inside Illustrator. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to like and subscribe. Are you hungry for more creative applications of Draw Inside? Then make your way to patreon.com slash deke now. The first 30 seconds or so are free to sample. I'm Deke McClellan. This is Illustrator Now.